program do not necessarily reflect the views of the station, its employees, or ownership. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to A Word from the Lord. Uh, heard, some, heard some very interesting calls from the last program, and uh, hope you will stay tuned to study God's Word with us. We'll be opening our phone lines up uh, as we get on into our program, but I want you to know that we appreciate you watching, and I want to remind you that at 10 o'clock, uh, those of you in, uh, in Henry County, Johnny Robertson will be coming on. What does the Bible say? Comes on again at 10 o'clock. Uh, for those of you in Martinsville, I'm not sure what channel it is. That's channel 18. Uh, channel 18. Or you can watch online at WGSR47.com and go to the Martinsville Live uh, link. I'm sorry. And, uh, and, uh, and, and watch there. So uh, anyway, uh, uh, hope that you will, will tune in that. And so uh, anyway, what does the Bible say comes on tonight at 10 o'clock for those of you in Henry County. Here's where you can meet with us if you're in the area, Eden area. We meet at 250 the Boulevard. Here's my phone number, 276-340-2653, uh, 336-394-5721. Or you can write me at, at, what, at a word from the Lord at gmail.com. And, uh, and here's again the information that Michael just gave you concerning those of you in Danville. If you are there, you can meet at 120 American Legion Boulevard. And uh, also if you're in Martinsville, 823 Starling Avenue. Tonight, uh, friends, I want to discuss some things that I have been noticing this time of year that happen quite often, uh, not just this time of year, really all year long. And I want to see if you notice what they all have in common. The first little sign I want to put up is an auction. Here we have an auction that's advertised, that's advertising uh, uh, a fund. Uh, a fund. Uh, it will fund a free Thanksgiving dinner for the community uh, at, at 10 a.m. This is sponsored by the Ridgeway Church of God. Uh, it's an auction that goes on. You can start the bidding starts at noon on this particular auction. Here you have a car wash and some some. Uh, uh, that is sponsored. I think this is the Freedom Baptist Church in Martinsville. This is uh, another event that goes on. Local churches have these car washes, and usually the, the, the girls or the people out there washing cars are very immodestly dressed. Had to put the car wash banner to try to cover up some of the, the nakedness that is um, the going on out there. The car washes uh, are promoted by churches for particular reasons, fundraisers, whatever. Uh, here you have a bake sale. This is a group of guys from Winston-Salem that came up, and they have their bake sale. I, I say bake sale. They're selling cookies and uh, lollipops, and I don't know what else was going on out there that they were selling, but this is in front of Walmart, which, interesting enough, Walmart, you can't, uh, you can't go and just pass out literature for free, but you can set up your table and sell things. I don't really understand why. They tell us that, well... If we, did, if we let y'all do it, we'd have to let all churches do it. Well, you let the Salvation Army ding-a-ling out there, and you let these guys sell. So anyway, I, I digress. But here you have a bake sale going on, raising funds to help bring a church into this area is what they were doing. And most recently, especially this time of year, in the spring and the, and the fall time of year, you have things like this. Uh, stew cook-offs. This is the headline from the... Uh, uh, recent paper, I believe this is the um, uh, maybe the regional paper, I'm not sure what, what paper it is, but Madison paper it says church cooks up an opportunity cooks up an opportunity for fellowship and here you can see them uh, with their big big pot of stew uh, that they're stirring it, this is the um, Mayadan United Methodist Church and they're cooking their Brunswick stew and uh, you know it's a good time for fellowship they say but as you look at this, you'll see that really what it is, it's not just a time where they can all get together and enjoy one another's company. Really, the article, the article will tell you the truth as you read on down in it. It's not a opportunity for fellowship. It's really an opportunity for fundraising. Notice this: Brunswick Stew annually. They sell Brunswick Stew annually on the fourth Saturday in September, sponsored as a fundraiser for church mission projects. The event also provides a welcome opportunity for fellowship for the class members. Well, you can get together and just cook stew all you want to. But the real reason why they're doing it 
is for a fundraiser. And so what I want you to see, friends, is that churches oftentimes do things like they have auctions, stew cook-offs, sell their apple butter, they sell their uh, baked goods, they have their, they have their Brunswick stew, and they sell it for fundraising. Now here's a question that we want to study tonight and want you to consider uh, tonight, and that is, what does the Bible say about church bake sales or fundraisers, auctions, uh, stew cook-offs? And it's not just the, the United Methodist Church in Mayadan that's doing this. A lot of, of churches, Church of Men, uh, this time of year had their Brunswick stews. So I think Stoneville had one going on or had one going on. All kinds of them, they're in the newspaper all the time. But what does the Bible say about these sort of things? You know, we always say on this program, if you ask what does the Bible say, you'll always get a word from the Lord. And that's what you're going to get tonight. We're going to give you a word from the Lord on this subject and just see if we can come to a knowledge of the truth, come to an understanding of the will of the Lord, Ephesians 5, 17, about what God would say about this very thing. What, would, what does God have to say? What is, his mind, what is His mind on church fundraising events like this? Friends, I can assure you that when you start reading out in the New Testament, after the beginning of the early church, you will soon find that they did not have anything even remotely resembling a stew cook-off or an auction or a bank sale in order to raise money for what they were doing. As a matter of fact, if we can just go to our scriptures here, we're going to put our scriptures up so we can, so we can uh, uh, read it together. But in Acts chapter 2, Acts chapter 2 and verse 45, let's just go there. Here we go. What did the early church do? And they sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men as every man had need. They sold their goods. They sold their possessions. And part of them, if there was a need, if there was a, a great need or necessity in the, uh, uh, in the first century, the early church, they sold their goods in order to provide for that, for that cause. They sold their possessions. And then in Acts 4, in verse 32, let's look again. Acts 4, verse 32. And notice this. And the multitude of them that believed... Uh, were of one heart and of one soul, neither said any of them that aught of the things which he possessed was his own, but they had all things common. And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the of Lord, Jesus Christ, uh, Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon all them. Verse 34, Neither was there any among them that lacked, for as many as were possessors of land and houses sold them, and brought the prices of the things that were sold, and laid them down at the apostles' feet, and distribution was made unto every man according as he had need. And Joseph, who by the apostles was surnamed Barnabas, which is being interpreted, uh, con son, the son of consolation, a Levi, and of the country of Cyprus, having land, sold it, and brought the money, and laid it at the apostles' feet. Here is a classic example of what individuals did in the first century when there was a need. They didn't have bake sales, stukakoffs, and yard sales, flea markets, and so forth. They sold their things and then brought them for distribution. In other words, they didn't have a big church yard sale or a church flea market. The individuals sold their possessions. The individuals sold their goods. They didn't have the Jerusalem flea market, the, the church uh, of Christ at Jerusalem flea market, and everybody bring their stuff and say, well, you know what? We're going to have a, a big yard sale flea market and we're going to sell cookies and baked goods and, and apple pies and we're going to have a Brunswick stew out here to sell in order to raise money for people who had a need. No. What they did, they said, you know what? Here is someone who has need. I am going to help them out myself. I'm going to sell my goods and I'm going to distribute it or have it distributed, make it available for distribution to those who have need. But you don't see that in the churches of men. Why? Because it's like Michael was saying earlier. They don't, the church of men don't follow the commands or the rules that you read in the New Testament. That's why you have everybody and anybody doing whatever they want because 
They don't follow the simple rules or patterns that you find in the first century church. Now, did they have such things in the New Testament? No. Look, the church, the early church, met its needs by free will offerings. Free will offerings. Now, understand something with me, uh, neighbor. Understand something with me. They gave of themselves. I know that's a hard concept, maybe, especially when you see everybody in the community around here having yoga classes like they have down at the Presbyterian Church in, in Eden or having Brunswick stew cook-offs in order to raise money for church functions. But here's what you have in the first century in the church of the Bible. You have a church that has free will offerings of its members. Look, in Acts chapter 11... Acts chapter 11, sorry about that. Acts chapter 11. Here we go. And verse 29. See if we get this there. All right, let's back up a, a few uh, verses. Here's the problem. Here's the event. Here's the need, you might say. Acts 11, verse 27. And in these days came prophets from Jerusalem unto Antioch, and there stood up one of them named Agabus and signified by the Spirit that there should be great dearth throughout all the world which came to pass in the days of Claudius Caesar. There's going to be a famine. There's going to be a very, very hard time that's going to be coming as spoke by Agabus the prophet. And he said it's going to be difficult. So this is what happened. Then the disciples, every man according to his ability determined to send relief unto the brethren which dwelt in Judea, which also they did and sent it to the elders by the hands of Barnabas and Saul. Now here was the need, and it was a, 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 a dearth was coming upon the land. Here was the need. Here was the desire, and here's how they did it. The disciples determined, and then they did it. They didn't have a big flea market or they didn't get together and say, you know what, we need to have a big chili cook-off. We need to bring everybody come together and let's make a great big pot of stew and then let's sell it and then send the proceeds down to uh, Jerusalem. They said, no, we are going to give as we determine in order to help with this relief effort. Now, you know what, friends? That's exactly according to the New Testament guidelines on giving. If there is a need, then the early church, they laid by in store, and every man gave as he was prospered. How do I know? Because I know what the Bible says about giving. Notice, in 1 Corinthians 16, verse 1 and 2, 1 Corinthians chapter 16, here we go. Now concerning the collection for the saints, as I have given order to the church of Galatia, even so you do ye, upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store, as God has prospered him, that there be no gains when I come. So they laid by in store upon the first day of the week, but notice, remember in Acts 11, they gave as they determined, as every man determined to give. Well, that's in accordance with what the Bible says. In 2 Corinthians... 2 Corinthians 9 and verse 7. Here we go. Every man according as he purposeth in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. Now, isn't that how they gave when the need arose in Acts chapter 11, verse 29? Every man determined as, as according to his... Uh, Every man, according to his ability, gave as he could in order to send relief. It's exactly what the Apostle Paul said do in 2 Corinthians, uh, in 2 Corinthians 9, verse 7. Every man, according to his ability, as he purposed in his heart, so let him give, not grudging of necessity. They gave free will offerings. Now, if you want to see how the early church conducted its business, just simply go and look in the Bible about what they did as far as giving. This is how they accomplished their tasks. Now, 
If someone wants to have a, have a yard sale, that's fine. If you, as an individual, want to have a yard sale and sell off your goods, that's your fine. That's your business. But you don't see the church coming together collectively, bringing all their stuff and say, this is for, uh, we're having this big event in order to, to accomplish a work of the church. You just don't see it. You don't see them coming together to raise money for, for evangelistic efforts with, by making a big pot of stew. You don't see them coming together for benevolent effort by having a big bake sale. You don't see them coming together for edification purposes in order to raise money for an ed uh, uh, edification cause and say, well, we're going to uh, let uh, uh, have a big yard sale, flea market, and let all the community come and buy our stuff and tell them this is to raise proceeds for our church function. No. They laid by and store up on the first day of the week when they came together to break bread. That's also when they laid by and store to, uh, for the work of the church. And that's exactly what the church of Christ does today. We lay by and store on the first day of the week so that we will have the means available to accomplish the work of the church today. No yard sales, no bake sales, no big pots of stew. We simply give a free will offering in order to accomplish what God said accomplish. Now, if you if you'll study the scripture, you'll realize that, hey, they gave free will offerings. They didn't have all these fun gimmick fundraisers. They simply laid by in store. Now, see, I, I I know some of you out there stewing right now. And by that I mean you're getting you're being pretty upset probably, but I'm not trying to make you mad. I'm just trying to make you think. I want you to stew on it a while. I want you to think about it. But I want you to realize this is how the early church did it. Now, isn't that exactly what these folks are doing that are different from the New Testament church? What they're doing, they're trying to accomplish the work of the church by doing something that the Bible never said the early church did. See, I know immediately... If I've studied giving in the New Testament, I know immediately that the United Methodist Church is doing it wrong. And anybody else that's selling Brunswick stew in order to raise money for, for the church, for, the, for something the church is trying to do, you're doing it wrong. And that's exactly what the United Methodist Church is trying to do. They're trying to raise money. Look at this. It's a fundraiser for church mission projects. Stay with me, folks. Stay with me. Listen, church mission projects, is that, really, is that really how they did in the first century was have a big Brunswick stew cook off and sell the proceeds in order to have for mission projects? Look, mission projects, again, in the first century, in the church of Christ that you read about in the Bible, the first century church, it was supported by the people and not by the public. Watch this. In the first century, if a mission effort was going to go forth, that is, someone was going to go out and teach the gospel, spread the gospel to parts of the world that it was unknown, the church didn't come together and say, well, let's uh, have a big cook-off, stew cook-off first, in order to raise money to send Paul and Barnabas, Saul and Barnabas out. No, they didn't do that at all. Here's how they did it. They laid by and store up on the first day of the week, and they purpose, this is what we're going to do. How do I know? How do I know that the church, that the church used its funds to send a men into the mission field? Because I know, number one, how they laid by and store. I know how they got their money. They laid by and store on the first day of the week. And then I know how they used it. Look at this. Philippians 1 and verse 5. Look what Paul says. Paul says to the, uh, to the Philippians, he said, he says, he thanks God upon every member to them for their fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now. They were involved in spreading the gospel from the very beginning. When he first went out, the church at Philippi helped him. How did they help him? Well, let's come on down to Philippians chapter 4 and let's notice Philippians 4 and verse 15. He says, now ye Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel... 
when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving, but ye only. For in Thessalonica, for in Thessalonica ye sent once and again unto my necessity. They helped him out. Now I'm sure they sent something more than just money. But nonetheless, they sent funds. How did these things come, how did these things come about? How was it that the church had anything to give to Paul? How was it they had anything to send to Paul to help out in his necessity? They laid by on the first day of the week. They came together on the first day of the week and they laid by in store. And thus, that's how they helped spread the gospel. That's how they funded their mission efforts. That's the way they did it. And notice this. Notice this. In 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 8 and 9, look what Paul says. Paul says, he says, I robbed other churches, taking wages of them to do you service. He's talking to the Corinthians. He said, look, I took wages of all of these different churches in order to come and do you service, in order to serve you, to be with you, to teach you the gospel. I took my wages of other churches. And when I was present with you and wanted, he said, when I had some need, I was with you and I, and I wanted he said, I was chargeable to no man for that which was lacking to me, the brethren which came from Macedonia supplied. And in all things I've kept myself, in all things I've kept myself from being burdensome unto you, and so will I keep myself. You know what, neighbors? <clears throat> the churches of Christ in this area, the church of Christ in this area make it possible for you to hear the gospel. But when you come and visit our assemblies and you see us pass the plate and we don't ask for any funds from you, we don't expect you to put money in the plate, we, we actually will tell you, you know, we, you're a visitor, glad you're here. You know, the donation that you give is you've given your time to come and hear the Bible being taught. Thank you for coming. We don't expect you to give. Don't expect you to give. You know what those funds are used for? They're not used to pay the preacher. I don't, take, I don't take any funds, any salary, any wages from the brethren in Eden. You know why? Because brethren from other places take care of my wages so that I can do you service. See? See how simple it is? And sometimes people get, they want to criticize us, and they say, yeah, James and Johnny, they go all down there in Texas. They got all these, these rich brethren down there in Texas. That's why they buy this airtime. You know what? All those brethren in Texas and wherever else, you know what they're doing? They're supplying the wages so that we can do you service. You may not, be, you may not feel very grateful to, uh, to, to me or Johnny or, or Mike or Mark or anybody like that for what we're doing. But really who you ought to be thinking is you ought to be thinking all these brethren in other, in other parts of the, of the country that make it possible for you to hear the gospel. They are supplying our way just so that we can do you service so that we don't have to be chargeable to even the brethren up here so they can get their, their feet on them so that they can come and they can, can grow and they can uh, start maturing in the faith and they can have the church established without having to worry about having to pay the preacher. And all the other preachers, all the pastors up here, the so-called pastors, all they do is put a burden on you and you're charge and they're chargeable to you because when they have need, oh, they hit you up for it. And you better believe, you better supply their needs. Paul said, no, that's not the way I operate. Now he could. He, 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 could have, he deserved some wages. 2 Corinthians 9, he said, look, you know, man doesn't go to battle without, of his own charges. You don't muzzle the ox or tread in the corn. He could have, been, he could have told them, look, y'all need to pay me something. But he didn't. He said, because I want to make sure that I can, I can be of service to you. 
I want to make sure that I can do what is necessary and you not be burdened. See? He said, I've kept, my, I've kept myself from having to, to put you in that position. That's what we're talking about. Now, is that how the first century church did it? Yes. Is that how folks like the United Methodist Church in Mayadan do it? No. See? They expect you, the community, to fund their mission projects. Let me tell you something. They don't have any right to ask you about that, to do that. They don't have any right to say, will you come and buy a pot of stew from us so that we can go out and teach our doctrine? They don't have any right to tell that, number one. And number two, you don't need to go buy a stew from them because the message that the Methodist church is preaching is not worth sending out into the world. If anything, you ought to say, no, I'm not going to buy that stew because you're poisoning everybody else spiritually. It may be good stew. It may be good in your belly, but it's not good in your soul. That's what the Methodist church teaches. Look, 3 John verse 7. Don't ask me what chapter. <laughs> 3 John verse 7. Look at this. Here's what, here's what uh, John says. John says about those who went out teaching the gospel, he said, he said, uh, your charity uh, before the church, they bore witness of your charity before the church, whom thou bringest forward on their journey after a godly sort, thou shalt do well. He's commending these brethren for helping gospel preachers go forward on their journey. And here's what he says, because that for his name's sake, they went forth taking nothing of the Gentiles. We therefore are to receive such that we might be fellow helpers to the truth. The first century church, the first century church did not expect those outside the Lord's church to help them carry a message into the world that the outside world hadn't even received yet. See, in the church of Christ, we don't expect you to donate your money to the cause that we're preaching when you yourself haven't even believed it. We want you to obey the gospel. We want you to obey the gospel. Then you have an obligation to carry that same gospel that you obeyed out into the world. But until then, everything that we're doing, we're not going to be chargeable to you. We're not going to be chargeable to you. See? And that's why we're not selling Brunswick stew and asking you to buy, to buy a bucket of it five or six dollars we're not selling stew or baked goods apple pies donuts cupcakes and saying come buy our cupcakes so that we can take the message of the gospel to you if anything we ought to be giving you something and that's what we're doing we're giving you something so in the first century they didn't have bake sales they didn't have stew cook offs they didn't have those sort of things. They simply took the gospel freely to those out in the lost and dying world. And that's what we're trying to do for you, friends. You need to see in the church of Christ individuals who are really concerned about your soul to the point that we're not begging and pleading for you to give us something. All we're doing is begging and pleading for you to take something from us. Now, when I looked at this article... I noticed something else. I thought about something. I thought about what was involved in making this pot of stew that they want you to buy. Think about this. Look at this. Here's the ingredients. It says, the pots filled with hundreds of pounds of ingredients would yield about 200 gallons of the stew. The work starts Friday evening with cooking more than 200 pounds of beef and 400 pounds of chicken. Potatoes, tomatoes, lima beans, peas, butter, and who knows what else goes in there. Now you think about this. All of this food is donated to put into this pot that then you, the non-Methodist, are expected to come and buy so that they 
can take the money that they got from you to carry the message, the Methodist message, the perverted Methodist message of the gospel back to you. What's wrong with this picture? Now, if you're really concerned about the lost, and sometimes, it's, well, this also helps the needy. You know, it feeds the hungry. Well, you know, think about this. What did the ingredients cost? If you really want to raise funds to send the gospel message, the mission message out to the world, why not just save the cost of that 600 pounds of beef and chicken and put that into your mission fund? Huh? Now, I don't know what the going rate on stew beef is or chicken. I don't know what, what, how much uh, per pound that would be. But I'll tell you one thing. If it's a couple of dollars a pound, that's a, that's, a, that's a lot of money. That's a lot of meat. If it's $2 a pound, if all this meat costs $2 a pound, you do the math. That's $1,200. That's $1, that could have gone to the mission fund. See? That's $100 a month they could have put into doing mission work. But no, they want to put it into the pot and expect you to buy it. Why not just give the cost of those ingredients to the church instead? If you really want to support the mission work the way the New Testament says. I'll tell you why. Because they're not concerned about how this goes. Or better yet, if you're concerned about the hungry or the needy, or you want to do a good job for the community, why not just make the stew and give it away? Why not just make the stew and give it away if you're really concerned about feeding the needy? See? Uh, there's, a, there's a brother that used to be in a Baptist church. If he wants to call in and uh, tell what church it was and the conversation that... Um, that he had with them when they were making their big pot of stew, uh, I, th I found it very interesting. Because when it all got down to it, when it all got down to it, they really weren't going. They really weren't in it for the to help the needy. They were in it for the money. They were in it for the money. Let's go and have the phone lines up, if you would, please. But see, sometimes people do things for. In the name of the Lord, or in the name of yeah, doing it in the name of the Lord, when in reality, that's that's not what they're doing it for. They're doing it for money. If they were really concerned about the poor and the needy, or they're really concerned about the loss, they would. They'd put their they'd uh, just put their money. Uh, give it right right to the church. To start with, you're on the word from the Lord. Yeah, good evening, James. Good evening. Yeah, I wanted to call and thank you, you, Johnny, Michael, Mark, and all the rest of you gentlemen who have brought the Church of Christ into this area, because until you guys got here, we didn't really know the truth, and you, what you said a minute ago was truth. We need to thank y'all, because we didn't hear the gospel, the truth. I never heard it till about four years ago, when you guys first came in, I started watching Johnny about 2004. Well, you know what? Uh, I appreciate that, but here's a sad commentary. Sad commentary is there are some churches of Christ in the area. Well, now you know, they, I they don't. Any of them. Uh, they don't. They don't love the truth enough to tell it to you, which tells me they're going to be in trouble with the Lord. You know, they're that that if they've got a light that's shining, they're putting it under a bushel, as Jesus would say. Well, and they need to repent. You know, but, they need to repent for not doing what the Lord said to do with the precious gospel. Well, you're right about that because I never heard of the Churches of Christ until you guys came into the area, and I'm thankful that you're here now where we can hear the true gospel. Okay. Thank you, sir. All right. Thank you much. Thank you much. You on the word from the Lord? Hey, James. Uh, hey. Well, me and my wife, when we first moved up here to Rockingham County, we started going to... Uh, New Life Baptist Church on Ball Hill Loop Road. New Life? Yeah, it was New Life Baptist Church on Ball Hill Loop Road. 
from okay. Madison. Okay. And uh, they started talking about doing one of those stews, and <clears throat> I asked them if they were planning on turning the church into a restaurant. And they said, no, no, we just want to make the stew because it gets, gives us all a chance to get together and fellowship and we can be together. And I said, well, are we going to give the stew away? And they said, no, 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 we can't do that. And they actually went as far, they built a thing behind their church building out of rock, like rock masonry, a permanent addition to the property for stew making. But they said it wasn't. They weren't going to turn it into a restaurant. But they weren't going to give the stew away either. Interesting, interesting. Now, now I tell you, the preacher that was over there then. Now he's not there no more. He's at a different church. His name was Tommy Brightwell. Okay. And he's over. I think it's called County Line Baptist now, on the far side of Rockingham County. Okay. He opened up a Texas barbecue place down on the highway. I think the church got to where they couldn't pay him. So he went and opened up a restaurant down on the highway. It's not there no more. Uh, it was there a couple of years or something. He didn't He didn't make it with that. But I guess they felt like maybe he was competition, you know, because that's when, when he got into that restaurant, that's when they run him off. Okay. It's almost like, you know, we're not turning the church into a restaurant. We're not going to give the stew away. But we don't want you running a restaurant to compete against us either. Well... Well, maybe maybe it just goes to show, or maybe the real lesson is their stew wasn't any good to start with. If it, you know, <laughs> so well, that's just, very interesting. Stuff like that's always kind of bothered me, and it just didn't seem honest to me to say, "Okay, we're doing this to get together," right? But but yet we're going to sell it. We're not going to give it away. It just didn't seem honest to right. me. Now, in the Church of Christ, we get together, you know, and we, you know. Everybody brings food, whatever, from time to time, and, and we get together, like when we put the tent up. Yeah. I mean, we get together, and we and we eat. We've been out working. We get together to eat. But, I mean, we're not selling it. No, we're you know, it We're getting together for the very reason, you know, we're laboring in the kingdom, and a, a, a the ox, you know, don't, tre- don't muzzle the ox tread in the corn. So the workers deserve to be fed. Yeah. And, uh, and sometimes we do it together you know, just to get together. But again, we don't, you know, we don't uh, uh, sell it to people. So it's not the Church of Christ restaurant, right? No. But it's <laughs> interesting. It, well, thanks for your call. Yes, sir. All right, thanks for your call. Well, it's interesting to note, too, that a lot of these uh, churches around here do have restaurants in them, and uh, it just slipped my mind which church is just being built. I'm afraid to say which one it is. But it seems like it might be one up in Martinsville that's being built and it's going to have a restaurant in it. Someone might call and, and uh, check me on that. I'm thinking of one in particular, but I'm not really sure if that's the case. Uh, who was it? Mercy Crossing. Is it Mercy Crossing has a has a restaurant in it? Yeah, Jackie Poe's Church. Okay, I'm being told Jackie Poe's Church in, in Martinsville. Okay, well... There's one right up here in Eden, the House of Prayer for All People. I've been in there, man. They got a nice dining room kitchen. What, what's that about? What's it for? Is it is it to help the needy or is it to raise funds? Every time I go by, they're trying to sell food. So, you know, let's let's wonder really what is the purpose of these events. You're on the word of the Lord. Welcome to the program. Yeah, I got a, I got a question for you. Okay. If you weren't getting paid, would you be sitting there running your mouth? If I wasn't getting paid? That's what I said. I don't stutter. I, I probably would. Had the opportunity. I don't think you would. Well, no. okay, you can think it. And, and I've, sir, I've preached, I've preached for no pay before. Now, what's your point? Oh, I just wanted you know, you look awful stupid up there. I figured you can pay for it. Right. Well, you know what? I'm glad, I'm glad you're not getting paid for your intelligence because all you can do is call in and say how stupid we look. So thank you for your call. All right, there you go. You know, friends, you know, he, I, I've preached for a long time without getting paid. I've preached many places without getting paid. So I don't know what difference it was. If I had the opportunity and the means to preach on television whether I was getting paid or not, yes, I would preach on television with no pay at all. So anyway, I don't know what his point is. 
Uh, I wish when next time he calls in and wants to say how stupid people are, I wish he'd tell us just where it is he goes to church. I, I think he said he doesn't go to church anywhere, which, you know, I don't know. Maybe they wouldn't have him. But anyway, all right. You're on the word from the Lord. Yeah, speaking of the graphic you got up on the uh, screen there, it says 600 pounds of beef and chicken. Mm-hmm. And it says, why not give the cost to the church instead? Yeah, the cost of this this food. Right. Whatever right. it would cost to buy this, why not just give it to the church instead of put right. it in the pot for the church to sell? Okay. I'm going to use a little bit of math and let you see why. Okay. According to what you said, a couple dollars a pound would be $1,200. Right. 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 Well, on the screen you put up that that made 200 of stew. Right. Correct. Okay. Right. 800 quarts. That would be 800 quarts of stew, correct? Yeah, I think so. But... But the point you're making, I know what you're saying. You'll make more money selling the stew than you would the meat. Let me speak. Are you going to let me speak? Or you I know. I, well, sir, get to the point. We're running out of time here. I know what your point is. The point is, at $5 a quart, like you said, that would be $4,000. Okay. That would be more money than right. the $1,200 that you said it would cost to make the stew. So that is the point of, instead of giving no. that $1,200 to the... Needy. Okay. About four thousand dollars. Okay, but here's but here's but here's what you're missing. Number one, they don't have the authority, according to the Bible, to raise funds for the work of the church by having a stew cook off. They have the authority to give the money to the church. Number one. Number two, that's just the cost of the meat. I didn't figure in the cost of the potatoes, or the cost of the beans, or the cost of the tomatoes or the cost of the butter, or any of the other ingredients they put in there. I just said the cost of the meat. $4,000. I'm just, well, I don't care how much it is. The point is, you don't have the authority to, to raise money for the work of the church like this. I'm not raising the it. The Bible says, well, I know, I, sir, I'm saying, I'm I say give. you, I'm saying you. Said, why not give? Sir, you know what? If you're not willing to see the point that I'm making, then I'm not going to talk to you. My point is, why not, instead of donating the meat, why not just donate the cost of the meat? Why not just donate what you paid for the meat and put it in the church coffers instead of having the community buy the food? See, that's my point. The church, if you're doing what the Bible says in the New Testament, you don't have a right to say, let's, let's make some food and sell it to the community. That's my whole point. I don't care how much more money you could make. If it's wrong, if you don't have authority for it, then you don't have authority for it. God didn't say, well, don't do this unless you can make more money for it. The church is not in the money-making business. See, that's what you're missing, sir. All right, here we go. Whoop. All right, sorry about that. You're on the word from the Lord. Yeah, yeah, James. Uh, I just wanted to say, uh, uh, why don't these churches and uh, people like Benny Hinn and all, why don't they have to account for the money they they raise and where it goes to? Or, or am I missing something? Well, the reason why is because of the laws on a nonprofit organization. You know, if they're a church, they don't have to. Uh, yeah, I've heard that. They don't have to disclose and everything. But uh, you know, when when Benny Hinn's making multi million dollars a year and living in a a multi million dollar house that's that's in the name of the church. In other words, the church built yeah. his house. It supposedly belongs to him, belongs to the church, and he lives in it. And pretty much everything he uses belongs to the church. Then. Uh, you know, he doesn't have to account for right. for that. And uh, uh spending twelve thousand dollars a night to take him and his uh entourage to spend the tonight at a hotel overseas somewhere. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, it was just uh, <laughs> that's what I think about a lot. Right. Well, 
I it, understand where you're coming from, but uh, that uh, I've offered donations, small donations to your uh, to the Church of Christ, and uh, they never accepted anything from me. And it, and it's and it's just because we don't expect it. We you know we're not saying we want it. We just we're just glad that you're listening and you know that you want to say the Bible with us. Well, I've been listening to you every week, and I listen to Johnny, and I listen to Michael, I listen to every one of you. I don't go to church, you know. I've only been to church, like I said, here in Danville twice. But uh, it's not that I don't want to go to church, but I do believe in uh, in what you're teaching. I, you know, I believe it's uh, what you're teaching is is the word from the Lord. I mean, you know, chapter for chapter and verse for verse. But just think about uh, raising money. I know what you're saying, uh, cause uh, there's a lot of people uh, come out and with all kind of uh, things and say, "Well, we need money for this, we need money for that," and you don't know where it goes to. Right. Or not all the time, anyway. Right. But I'm always willing to, you know, donate a little bit of money to a real worthwhile uh, charitable organization. Well, I, I appreciate that attitude. I appreciate the, the willing mind. You know, but we're not asking for it, and we just, we're just glad you're watching. Yeah, sir. Well, well, I thank you, and I uh, appreciate what you're doing. All right. Bless you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. See, and see, friends, this is what we're talking about. The church is not in the money-making business. And so, uh, you know, I, I don't know, you know, I, I don't know why people would, uh, you know, try to figure out a way to make more money. You're on the word from the Lord. Welcome to the program. Hey, James, this is Daniel. How you doing? Hey, Daniel. Uh, I know your second caller was calling in about the uh, Churches of Christ. Uh, some are different. Uh, I think me and you had a discussion on that. It's uh, one on Settle, Settle Street up here yes, in Reasonable. Yes, sir. I think it's J.R.'s church about mm-hmm. uh, the marriage situation me and you talked about. Right. Uh, yeah, yeah, most, some of them are, don't really teach the Word, uh, which in the Bible. Right. I just want to let the community know that. Uh, you know, uh, some of them are, are like you said, or they don't teach it the way you, the way you and Johnny right. do, James. And you probably never would, you never would know that they were even there, you know, until, uh, you know, I hear people all the time, you know, I never would have known about the Church of Christ, like the caller said, until, until y'all brought to our attention. But there have been people who claim to be members of the Church of Christ right there in their community all this time, and they haven't been doing anything. Exactly. You know, exactly. which tells me shame on them. That's right. And James. that's why you know that's why we don't have anything to do with those individuals because they're not, you know, they're not striving to spread the gospel that can save men's souls like we are. Now we'd like for them to, we'd like for them to repent and say, you know what, we haven't been doing anything lately. Uh, you know, we've left our first love. We need to get back out uh, spreading the gospel. And yeah, when that when that was brought up up there at the uh, uh, Church of Christ of uh, Settle Street. Uh, when that was brought up, he said that I probably wouldn't come back because of the way he was teaching, and he he guessed it right because I mean you had that discussion and mm-hmm. everything. But I want you to know James doing a good job, and I'll see you Sunday. All right, all right, thank you. Bye. All right, you on the word from the Lord? Welcome to the program. Hey James. Hey. Um, yeah, I, I think uh, the reason some of these callers are are so irate, they see the hypocrisy, and I know. Uh, I don't know whether you're familiar with St. John's United Methodist Church down here on the Stony Mill Road, but they have a what they call a cow pasture sale every year, and they sell plants and baked goods and all this kind of stuff. And, uh, you know, I think you're upholding Romans 16, 17, and 18 very well tonight. And they know, you know, Baptists don't agree with the Methodist doctrine, the Pentecostals don't agree with the Baptists and all this and that and other, but yet they'll go over there and... Uh, you know, fill their bellies full of the stew and baked goods and all this, mm-hmm. and that they bound to see the hypocrisy in it. Right, right. Well, I think you're probably right. No, I think you pointed it out really good. All right, well, thank you. Appreciate it. All right, we'll see you. All right, well, so here's a question. Here's a question. Why not just ask the old uh, question, you know, what would Jesus do? We'll take one call. You're on the word of the Lord. Welcome to the program. Yes, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing well. Um, I was just watching the program and um, never really been to a church of yours, but we went to some Baptist churches where the pastor 
uh, turns the plate around two or three times in the service. Um, and it just makes you feel uncomfortable. And, and with the economy like it is, I think you should just give what you could to the Lord and he would understand. I, I agree. Uh, but if you're giving it to the Baptist church, you're not giving it to the Lord. You know, that that would be my only uh, disagreement with what you said, but I agree. You know, it ought to show, you know, and it ought to uh, wrestle with people when, you know, when they're passing the plate around two or three times, there's, there's, there's some reason other than giving it to the Lord. So, uh, so have you visited the Church of Christ? Uh, no, I haven't. Well, if you uh, are you in Martinsville, Danville, you're what'd you say, Bassett? Uh, no, I'm in Reedsville. Okay, Reedsville. Well, if you'll if you'll visit with one of us, I you know, and examine what it's like, I think you'll you know you'll uh, come away encouraged because you'll know you're getting the Bible. Exactly. So, uh, so it just it makes you uncomfortable with the economy the way it is. I think people give it all they can, and right. And the pastor always makes sure that he says give big bills, not small. So he makes yeah. you feel bad right at the beginning of the service. Yeah, you you'll never hear that in the Church of Christ. You'll never hear that in Church of Christ. But if you're in, if, but if you'll visit with us, you know you, you'll hear us tell you don't even put in into play. Now that's you know that that'll be different, wouldn't it? Exactly. For you to be somewhere. And, and just hear him say, you know, we don't want your money. We're just glad you're here. So, uh, well, I, I encourage you, you know, visit, visit, uh, visit the Church of Christ and, and uh, see, what you, see what you think. All right. Thank you very right. much. Thank you. All right. All right. Take one more call. You're, uh, you're on the word from the Lord. Uh, yes. I would like to thank you. Turn, turn all, your TV down just a little bit, please. I would like to thank you and all the guys that preach with you. Anybody would call and disagree with you ain't very smart. You are preaching the Bible there, reading it, and they can see it. And anybody disagreeing with you has got to be of the devil, a stupid one. And... I'd like to tell you that. And I thank you for taking my call. All right. Well, I appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Yeah. Thanks for watching. All right. That was interesting how we recognize that man's voice, but I appreciate you watching. Now, let's just ask the question, what would Jesus do? Would Jesus make a pot of stew and sell it? No. Notice this. When the disciples came to him and the people didn't have anything to eat, notice. He said, send them off to buy, to buy victuals. Jesus said unto them, they, must, they need not depart. Give ye them to eat. And they said unto him, We have not but five loaves and two fishes. He said, Bring them hither. And he commanded them to uh, the multitude to sit down on the grass. And he took them, and he took the five loaves and two fishes, and he looked at the heaven and blessed, break it, gave the loaves to his disciples and, and the multitudes. And they ate, verse 20, they, all, they did all eat and were filled, and they took up the fragments that remained twelve baskets full. Jesus took what he had and fed everybody. He didn't say, Now, I'm going to divide this um, fish and, and bread, and we're going to charge. You know, we're going to charge a, 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 a penny a head. You know, we're going to charge six pence a head. No, he said, let's give it to them. If you're really concerned, why not just give it to them? But, friends, remember this. What's more important than, than filling up someone's belly? What's more important is giving people the bread of life that actually can save their soul. Jesus said, Labor not for the meat which perisheth, but for that meat which endureth unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give to you, uh, for him hath, the, hath God the Father sealed. You labor for the spiritual food. And friends, that's exactly what we're trying to give you. We're trying to give you everything we have is, is free. We want you to know that. We want you to know that we, we love you so much that we realize what's important is giving you the word of God. We're not selling anything. We don't sell stew. And we don't sell, uh, uh, you know, uh, sausage biscuits or baked, uh, baked donuts or whatever. But what we do have, we give it to you free. Such as we have, we give to you. DVDs, books, tracts, Bible studies, all free. Never ask you for any money. All we ask is that you simply give us a chance to give you a word from the Lord. That's all we're asking. Jesus said... Remember, or Paul said, remember the words of the Lord, how he said it's more blessed to give than to receive. 
Friends, we want to give to you a word from the Lord that will really bless your lives if you will simply render obedience to it. If we can assist you in obeying the gospel, believe Jesus is the Son of God, repent of your sins, confess Christ before man, and be baptized for the remission of sins, if we can assist you doing that, we'll be glad to do so. We're going to wrap up. I see the numbers are down, so we're going to wrap up. Friends, what you need to do is, is remember this. If you'll ask, what does the Bible say? You'll always get a word from the Lord. Have a good night. I couldn't stay in China at first. I thought he was a nut. And once I read the Bible for myself, I'm able to accept the truth now. All right. And it doesn't make me angry. I'm talking about the Lauren Hardy show on Wednesday. Don't worry about them, some of y'all. Get off of it, would you? Don't dare do that again. Shut that up. Shut that up. Shut that up. As your pastor.